Himba people, Wikipedia audio. The Himba are indigenous peoples with an estimated population of about 50,000 people living in northern Namibia, in the Kunana region and on the other side of the Kunana River in Angola. There are also a few groups left of the OVA TWA, who are also OVA Himba, but are hunter gatherers. The OVA Himba are a semi nomadic, pastoralist people, culturally distinguishable from the Herero people in northern Namibia and southern Angola, and speak at Jihimba, a variety of Herero, which belongs to the Bantu family within Niger Congo. The Ova Himba are considered the last nomadic people of Namibia. The Ova Himba are predominantly livestock farmers who breed fat tailed sheep and goats, but count their wealth in the number of their cattle. They also grow and farm rain fed crops such as maize and millet. Livestock are the major source of milk and meat for the Ova Himba. Their diet is also supplemented by cornmeal, chicken eggs, wild herbs and honey. Only occasionally, and opportunistically, are the livestock sold for cash. Non-farming businesses, wages and salaries, pensions, and other cash remittances make up a very small portion of the Ova Himba livelihood, which is gained chiefly from their work in conservancies, old age pensions, and drought relief aid from the government of Namibia. Culture Women and girls tend to perform more labor-intensive work than men and boys do, such as carrying water to the village, earthen plastering the Mopane wood homes with a traditional mixture of red clay soil and cow manure binding agent, collecting firewood, attending to the calabash vines used for producing and ensuring a secure supply of soured milk, cooking and serving meals as well as artisans making handicrafts, clothing and jewellery. The responsibility for milking the cows and goats also lies with the women and girls. Women and girls take care of the children, and one woman or girl will take care of another woman's children. The men's main task is preoccupied tending to the livestock farming, herding where the men will often be away from the family home for extended periods, animal slaughtering, construction, and holding council with village tribal chiefs. Members of a single extended family typically dwell in a homestead, a small family village, consisting of a circular hamlet of huts and work shelters that surround an okura wo and a crawl for the sacred livestock. Both the fire and the livestock are closely tied to their veneration of the dead, the sacred fire representing ancestral protection and the sacred livestock allowing proper relations between human and ancestor. Both the Himba men and women are accustomed to wearing traditional clothing that befits their living environment in the Kayakoland and the hot semi-arid climate of their area, in most occurrences this consists simply of skirt-like clothing made from calfskins or increasingly from more modern textiles and occasionally sandals for footwear, with foot solace often found made from old car tires. Himba women especially, as well as Himba men, are remarkably famous for covering themselves with a G's paste, a cosmetic mixture of butterfat and ochre pigment, to cleanse the skin over long periods due to water scarcity and protect themselves from the extremely hot and dry climate of the Kayakoland as well as against mosquito insect bites. The cosmetic mixture, often perfumed with the aromatic resin of the Omuzumba shrub, gives their skin and hair plates a distinctive orange or red tinge characteristic, as well as texture and style. But G's is considered foremost a highly desirable aesthetic beauty cosmetic, symbolizing Earth's rich red color and blood the essence of life, and is consistent with the Ova Himba ideal of beauty. Hairstyle and jewelry play a significant role among the Ova Himba, it indicates age and social status within their community. 
An infant or child will generally have their head kept shaved of hair or a small crop of hair on their head crown, this soon is sculptured to one braided hair plate extended to the rear of the head for young boys and young girls have two braided hair plates extended forward towards the face often parallel to their eyes, the form of wear being determined by the Orozo membership, the style remains during pre-adolescence until reaching puberty. Some young girls, with exception, may also have one braided hair plate extended forwards, which means they are one of a pair of twins. From pubescence, boys continue to have one braided hair plate, girls will have many at G's textured hair plates, some arranged to veil the girl's face, in daily practice the hair plates are often tied together and held parted back from the face. Women who have been married for about a year, or have had a child, wear an ornate headpiece called the arambe, sculptured from sheepskin, with many streams of braided hair, colored and put in shape with a G's paste. Unmarried young men continue to wear one braided hair plate extended to the rear of the head, while married men wear a cap or head wrap and unbraided hair beneath. Widowed men will remove their cap or head wrap and expose unbraided hair. The Ovahimba are also accustomed to use wood ash for hair cleansing due to water scarcity. The Ovahimba are polygamous, with the average Himba man being husband to two wives at the same time. They also practice early arranged marriages. Young Himba girls are married to male partners chosen by their fathers. This happens from the onset of puberty which may mean that girls aged 10 or below are married off. This practice is illegal in Namibia, and even some Ova Himba contest it but it is nevertheless widespread. Among the Himba people, it is customary as a rite of passage to circumcise boys before puberty. Upon marriage, a Himba boy is considered a man unlike a Himba girl who is not considered a fully-fledged woman until she bears a child. Despite the fact a majority of Ova Himba live a distinct cultural lifestyle in their remote rural environment and homesteads, they are however socially dynamic, and not all are isolated from the trends of local urban cultures. The Ova Himba coexist and interact with members of their country's other ethnic groups and the social trends of urban townsfolk. Especially those in proximity to the Kunana region capital of Opiwo, traveling frequently to shop at the local town supermarkets for the convenience of commercial consumer products, market food produce and to acquire health care. Because of the harsh desert climate in the region where they live and their seclusion from outside influences, the Ova Himba have managed to maintain and preserve much of their traditional lifestyle. Members live under a tribal structure based on bilateral descent that helps them live in one of the most extreme environments on Earth. Under bilateral descent, every tribe member belongs to two clans one through the father and another through the mother. Himba clans are led by the eldest male in the clan. Sons live with their father's clan, and when daughters marry, they go to live with the clan of their husband. However, inheritance of wealth does not follow the Patri clan but is determined by the Matri clan, that is, a son does not inherit his father's cattle but his maternal uncles instead. Subsistence Economy Bilateral descent is found among only a few groups in West Africa, India, Australia, Melanesia, and Polynesia, and anthropologists consider the system advantageous for groups that live in extreme environments because it allows individuals to rely on two sets of families dispersed over a wide area. The Ova Himba history is fraught with disasters including severe droughts and guerrilla warfare, especially during Namibia's War of Independence and as a result of the civil war in neighboring Angola. Between 1904-1908, 
they suffered from the same attempt at genocide during the Herrera Wars conducted by the German Empire colonist government in German Southwest Africa under Lothar von Trotha that decimated notably the Herrero people and the Nama people during the Herrero and Namaqua genocide. In the 1980s it appeared the Ova Himba way of life was coming to a close due to a climax in adverse climatic conditions and political conflicts. A severe drought killed 90% of their livestock, and many gave up their herds and became refugees in the town of Opiwo living in slums on international humanitarian aid or joined Koifuit paramilitary units to cope with the livestock losses and widespread famine. Ova Himba living over the border in Angola, were occasionally victims of kidnapping during the South African Border War, either taken as hostages or abducted to join the Angolan branch of the People's Liberation Army of Namibia. The Ova Himba are a monotheistic people who worship the god Mukuru, as well as their clan's ancestors. Mukuru only blesses, while the ancestors can bless and curse. Each family has its own sacred ancestral fire, which is kept by the fire keeper. The fire keeper approaches the sacred ancestral fire every seven to eight days in order to communicate with Mukuru and the ancestors on behalf of his family. Often, because Mukuru is busy in a distant realm, the ancestors act as Mukuru's representatives. The Ova Himba traditionally believe in Omidi which some translate to mean witchcraft but which others call black magic or bad medicine. Some Ova Himba believe that death is caused by Omidi, or rather, by someone using Omidi for malicious purposes. Additionally, some believe that evil people who use Omidi have the power to place bad thoughts into another's mind or cause extraordinary events to happen. But users of Omidi do not always attack their victim directly, sometimes they target a relative or loved one. Some Ova Himba will consult a traditional African diviner healer to reveal the reason behind an extraordinary event, or the source of the Omidi. The Ova Himba have been successful in maintaining their culture and traditional way of life. As such, the Ova Himba have worked with international activists to block a proposed hydroelectric dam along the Kunana River that would have flooded their ancestral lands. 2011, Namibia announced its new plan to build a dam in Oroka, in the Baines Mountains. The Ova Himba submitted in February 2012 their protest declaration against the hydroelectric dam to the United Nations the African Union and to the government of Namibia. Daily Life Clothing and Hair Style The government of Norway and Iceland funded mobile schools for Himba children, but since Namibia took them over in 2010, they have been converted to permanent schools and are no longer mobile. The Himba leaders complain in their declaration about the culturally inappropriate school system, that they say would threaten their culture, identity, and way of life as a people. Customary Practices Societal Participation Tribal Structure History Religion Groups of the last remaining hunters and gatherers Ovitwe are held in secured camps in the northern part of Namibia's Kunana region despite complaints by the traditional Himba chiefs that the Ovitwe are held there without their consent and against their wishes. In February 2012, traditional Himba chiefs issued two separate declarations to the African Union and to the Okra of the United Nations. The first, titled Declaration of the Most Affected Ova Himba, Ovitwe, Ovitjimba, and Ovazimba against the Oroka Dam in the Baines Mountains outlines the objections from regional Himba chiefs and communities that reside near the Kunana River. Since Namibian Independence The second, 
title declaration by the traditional Himba leaders of Kayakoland in Namibia lists violations of civil, cultural, economic, environmental, social and political rights perpetrated by the government of Namibia. September 2012 the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples visited the Ovahimba and heard their concerns that they do not have recognized traditional authorities and that they are placed under the jurisdictions of chiefs of neighboring dominant tribes, who make decisions on behalf of the minority communities. In his view, the lack of recognition of traditional chiefs, in accordance with Namibian law, relates to a lack of recognition of the minority indigenous tribes' communal lands. November 23, 2012, hundreds of Ovahimba and Zemba from Omohonga and Epub region protested in Okangwadi against Namibia's plans to construct a dam in the Kunana River in the Baines Mountains, against increasing mining operations on their traditional land and human rights violations against them. March 25, 2013, over 1,000 Himba people marched in protest again, this time in Opiwo, against the ongoing human rights violations that they endure in Namibia. They expressed their frustration over the lack of recognition of their traditional chiefs as traditional authorities by the government, Namibia's plans to build the Oroka Dam in the Baines Mountains at the Kunana River without consulting with the Ovahimba, who do not consent to the construction plans, culturally inappropriate education, the illegal fencing of parts of their traditional land, and their lack of property rights to the territory that they have lived upon for centuries. They also protested against the implementation of the Communal Land Reform Act of 2002. On October 14, 2013, Himba Chief Kaipka, on behalf of his region Epuba and the community which was featured in German RTL reality TV show Wild Girls condemned the misuse of Himba people, individuals and villagers in the show and demanded the halt of broadcasting any further episodes as they would mock the culture and way of being of the Himba people. March 29, 2014, Ova Himba from both countries, Angola and Namibia, march again in protest against the dam's construction plans as well as against the government attempt to bribe their regional Himba chief. In the signed letter of the Himba community from Epuba, the region that would be directly affected by the dam, the traditional leaders explain that any consent form signed by a former chief as a result of bribery wasn't valid as they remain opposed to the dam. Several researchers have studied the Ovahimba perception of colors. The Ovahimba use four color names, Zuzu stands for dark shades of blue, red, green, and purple, Vapa is white and some shades of yellow, Buru is some shades of green and blue, and Dombu is some other shades of green, red and brown. It is thought that this may increase the time it takes for the Ovahimba to distinguish between two colors that fall under the same Herero color category, compared to people whose language separates the colors into two different color categories. Human Rights Himba village about 15 kilometers north of Opiwo, Namibia. Himba woman and some of her family standing in her father's homestead in Otudidi, Kunana region, Namibia. Anthropological investigations. Himba woman working, Namibia. Pubescent Himba girl with hair headdress styled to veil her face. Color perception. Literature Male Himba herders Himba woman prepares a fire Himba huts in the background As is customary in Himba culture and climate, a Himba girl of northern Namibia wears a traditional skirt made from calfskin leather, headdress and jewelry which signify her social status. Himba woman working 
photographs.